Hi everybody, uh, thanks for joining our talk today. Uh, this year it's of course it's virtual, so we don't get to see all of you in person, but we're hoping uh, this time next year there will be an EU KubeCon uh, when it's safe to travel and look forward to seeing everyone then. Today we're going to be talking uh, about service identity uh, and how pretty much it's, it's fundamental to achieving zero trust in a cloud native uh, environment. I'm Matt, I'm from uh, Jetstack, just like Josh, uh, who's joining me today. Um, we're a company focused on cloud native and we've been working uh, in the Kubernetes ecosystem since the very early days and back to about 2014, 2015, uh, when Kube was first um, open sourced, not really that long ago. It's amazing how far we've come. Uh, in that time, we've worked with many companies who have adopted cloud native uh, from, you know, some, from startups to some of the largest enterprises. And uh, along the way, uh, we've uh, contributed to open source upstream, and uh, we've uh, also open sourced a number of projects. And we're, we're probably best known uh, for the, the CERT manager project, which we originally created and now work on with you know, lots of contributors um, in the community. It's, and of course, it's now a CNCF project uh, as well. Josh, I'm yeah. joined today by Josh. Do you want to introduce yourself to you? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Josh. Um, I'm a software engineer uh, at Jetstack. Um, uh, do uh, a few things at Jetstack, but yeah, primarily uh, part of the Cert Manager team. Great, thanks, Josh. So today uh, we're going to be, as I said, uh, looking at um, zero trust. Um, of course, zero trust is it's quite a buzzword, uh, but we're going to look at it specifically. Um, in the context of cloud native and, and what it means for Kubernetes and, and also what it means in, in a service mesh, you know, how you can use, uh, how you can achieve zero trust um, using the identity management uh, that service mesh provides. Um, we're going to be also looking at how you can plug in Cert Manager. We're behind the project and we've been working, uh, should I say we, uh, Josh has been working on some of the integrations um, that, that tap into uh, managing certificates and providing those to, to the mesh. And we've got a number of demos as well, so let's get going. So briefly to start, um, we're gonna introduce the concepts of zero trust um, in the context of cloud native. So in traditional network security, um, it's all very much about having you know, layers um, of security, um, you know, a defense in depth, if you like, in order to protect you know, really the most sensitive uh, services. Um, and the model is really based around protecting, protecting networks um, from external um, attackers. And yeah, it often gets described as the castle and moat approach in which everything inside um, is trusted. It, you know, everything, um, once, you're, once you're in the castle, effectively you're trusted. Um, but this really overlooks uh, really the threat of insider attack. And you know, there have been a number of um, high profile cases uh, where yeah, where breaches have occurred um, internally. So now let's move to the world of cloud. How do, how, yeah, how does this traditional network security model uh, does it does it work? Um, when in the world of cloud, uh, multi and hybrid cloud, it's actually it's really challenging. Um, no longer it's no longer clear where the perimeters lie. Um, and it really, it's very difficult to find a consistent means of really drawing up those, um, those perimeters. It's fair to say that the traditional model of securing application networking is really very much based on infrastructure that, that changes very infrequently. It's static. Uh, you know, we rely on fixed IP addresses, um, ports, uh, access control lists, firewalls. And in a world of cloud native, uh, this this becomes highly challenging. Um, why? Because you know, we've got clusters in different clouds on different networks and virtual networks even, uh, and the workloads um, that run in those clouds and clusters are really highly highly dynamic and ephemeral. Um, some are very short lived, some much more longer lived, um, and it's not just Kubernetes, right? You know, we've got um, functions here, serverless, um, standard virtual machines. Um, and of course, infrastructure on premise um, that we uh, also need to integrate. So it's clear that the sort of perimeter based approach 
um, really just doesn't fit and it doesn't scale uh, and it's incompatible with uh, really how we're building and and deploying software uh, today. So instead, what we're going to move to where we where where of course the industry is moving to is a model where effectively the network is completely untrusted and there is no implicit trust. Uh, you know, you cannot trust uh, another service. Um, yeah, that doesn't mean giving up on the defenses, of course, a perimeter, right? But now we're assuming that the attackers could well be in our network. They are in our networks. And that means making sure that all communications, the service to service calls are secure. I meaning you know, encrypted on the wire, uh, but also that the services are able to authenticate uh, to each other. Uh, and that's each and every service, each and every time. So how do we do this? Well, it means each of this has to be able to identify itself. Uh, and we're talking here, you know, a cryptographically verifiable, uh, unique identity um, that, that it can attest. And with identity, we can authenticate between services. Um, you know, once we've got that, we can also begin to make authorization requests. You know, we understand the service, who it is, um, and we can make a decision about uh, what uh, that service um, is requesting, you know, um, for instance, can this type of request be made by this service, um, you know, accessing a, some particular resource, for instance. And we've also then got the ability to audit this, um, provide you know, things like threat detection, so on and, uh, and so on and so forth. But pretty much, though, the foundation in all of this is identity, uh, you know, machine identity, as it's now being referred to uh, by the analysts. So rather than relying on developers uh, actually obtaining uh, identity you know, certificates um, themselves and you know, applying um, you know, layers of uh, implementation for things like observability, um, that, that, that identity, uh, also you know, reliability features, um, service meshes provide that in, really built into the platform. And uh, this is a capability that is programmable so it's, it's dynamic uh, and is controlled you know, with control plane configuration uh, and the data plane itself um, are proxies so now rather than the services you know i've got an example here of service a service b communicating directly um, the services communicate via these proxies and these proxies are securely connected um, using mtls uh, and you know credentials which are obtained and renewed um, and have that identity encoded in them and we're going to talk a bit more about how uh, the identities um, are obtained and, and what they are but this is a the you know, service meshes are incredibly uh, incredibly convenient they, they, they take away a lot of what a developer would typically do uh, and may do you know and as we know we're developing you know, developing things like this it's, it's quite easy uh, to get security wrong and um, so Service mesh is really convenient because they take away uh, a lot of this um, difficult, complex implementation and put it into, if you like, the network layer uh, and enable it to be programmable. And so we're going to look today at how specifically uh, the service meshes can help us uh, manage that identity and then importantly use that identity to do the likes of um, authorization, policy based um, authorization. Uh, So I mentioned uh, MTLS or, or mutual TLS, and that, uh, that is how uh, the, the proxies communicate in a mesh uh, between, you know, between the services um, that are in the mesh. Uh, Josh, you're going to talk to us about what MTLS is and how it works. Great. So I'm going to talk about mutual TLS and how service mesh uses mutual TLS uh, to create a network of zero trust. Um, so as was mentioned earlier, um, so all workloads uh, running in the mesh uh, on Kubernetes um, have a sidecar container uh, running next to them. Um, and that sidecar container is a proxy. Um, and the responsibility of the proxy here is to intercept all ingress and egress traffic from the service which is uh, backing that proxy. 
Um, so what this means in terms of connections is say uh, service A wants to talk to service B or well, service A will open up that connection uh, that will get intercepted by the proxy. Uh, that proxy will then uh, connect to service B's proxy and uh, then assuming that connection uh, uh, um, it is uh, okay, uh, that traffic will then um, get forwarded on to, to service B. Now it's worth noting here that um, the, the way these uh, kind of proxies are uh, injected like this is means that they're, they're, there's no code changes needed for um, any service. Um, and as far as either service is concerned, uh, they're connecting to each other uh, normally over HTTP, um, etc. Um, so if you talk about, uh, or if we think about um, what uh, kind of network flow uh, would look like, um, so when these um, services uh, uh, boot up, um, they will request these crypto bundles from the control plane um, of the of the mesh they're, they're uh, running in. So inside these crypto bundles, then con it will contain the um, root of trust um, of the mesh, um, uh, along with a signed certificate, uh, which will contain their machine identity. Uh, inside, um, so the the kind of service identity, um, as well as the private key, uh, which will be used um, uh, uh, with, with which is uh, the kind of corresponding pair with the signed certificate, um, and these these will be stored uh, inside the proxy. And these will be used to kind of open connections up to the other proxy. So um, if we say that client A uh, wants to uh, service A wants to connect to service B, what will happen is the proxy will connect to uh, the other proxy. Uh, the server will, uh, just like a normal TLS, uh, present uh, its uh, signed certificate. The client will then uh, verify the contents of that, uh, that certificate. So it's going to verify um, that, that it's been signed by the root of trust uh, that it's expecting and also that the identity uh, matches that which it which is um, uh, expecting. You can also make networking decisions here. Um, it can also make you know, authorization decisions here uh, based on kind of the identity it receives. So it's also going to challenge uh, the kind of contents of that certificate. So it's going to make sure that the service B proxy also owns uh, that certificate it, it, it's presenting. So it also holds the private key. And uh, if it's happy, it's also going to send the server uh, the uh, its own client uh, certificate. Um, and that process is is uh, going to repeat. So um, what you get here is, uh, you know, in the normal case of uh, uh, the case of normal TLS, the client is going to verify that the server um, certificate uh, matches what it's expecting. Also, the server is going to um, verify that the client certificate is also what it's uh, expecting. So this is where the uh, kind of mutual um, uh, trust comes in. So if we take a, a bird's eye view um, of how this looks like. Um, you can see that the uh, control plane component, which I was mentioning earlier, is responsible for delivering uh, these bundles to the workloads on boot and, and on renewal. So if we take Istio's case, which we have here, uh, it's the Citadel component, which is responsible um, kind of facilitating um, sending uh, th these crypto bundles. So it's the Citadel that's going to be signing these, uh, these certificates, which contain um, the identity of each service. Um, uh, the kind of identity of each service, um, you know, in the Kubernetes world um, is, is typically done by the service account. Um, so on boot, um, the kind of service A, for example, will send a request using the service A service account to Citadel. Uh, it's going to, you know, verify that service account is signed by the API server, and then it's going to sign a, a, a certificate uh, to send back uh, to the service A proxy. Now, the way the identity is encoded um, in the X509, X509 certificate um, is either done, you know, by DNS, uh, let's say, or in the Istio's case, uh, through Spiffy, through through URI. And Spiffy um, is a framework um, for uh, 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 for effectively encoding identities uh, into kind of identity documents. Um, so in the case of X509, um, this is actually just a, a string in the in the URI um, sans uh, part of the certificate, um, and it's encoded um, like you see here. So you have the trust domain. So in this case, it's cluster local, but that could be, you know, Europe West one, Europe West two, mesh two, uh, what have you. Um, and then followed by, you know, whatever makes sense uh, in the context um, uh, of the kind of trust domain that it's, that it's operating in. So again, in the Kubernetes world, this is the service account. So it will be followed by the, you know, the namespace that the service account belongs to and then the name of the service account itself. We're now going to look at how service identity works with a number of different service mesh um, implementations. And we've got three and we're gonna look at them briefly and we're gonna show you a bit of a demo. Uh, so just to, to start with, um, we're gonna uh, look at Istio. Uh, so this is the uh, architecture of Istio, um, specifically 
focusing in on sort of the components that are used um, for, for its security controls. And to, to point out here, Istio in its control plane has something uh, called a component called the Citadel. Uh, it's now part of Istio D, uh, and that is effectively responsible uh, for uh, providing the uh, the X509, the, the TLS certificates to the proxies, the in this case, the Envoy-based um, proxies. Uh, now, out of the box, it, it's self-signed, and so it has a self-signed CA, um, and you know, actually, uh, you know, you can really just let, um, sort it up and use it as is. Um, but if you're wishing to integrate this into an existing PKI, and then there is a means to be able to plug your own uh, CA um, into Istio, and uh, Josh is going to demonstrate with a demo uh, how to do this. Over to you, Josh. Thanks, Matt. Um, so what I have here, um, I have two certificates already installed inside the cluster. Um, so I have a uh, root CA, which is the root of my PKI. Um, this typically would live offline uh, from the cluster, but I have it installed here. Um, and I've also minted an intermediate certificate authority, uh, which is going to be used as the root of trust um, for my Istio mesh that I'm about to install. Um, so the first step for using this intermediate uh, kind of custom CA um, with the uh, with Istio. Is I need to extract uh, you know the private key CA uh, and uh, certificate um, into a format which um, Istio accepts. Um, so what I'm all I'm doing here is extracting that and putting it into um, various files. Um, I'm then going to create a secret based uh, from those files um, and put them in yeah put them into a secret. Um, so when I install Istio here, uh, since that secret is already available, Istio D is going to read uh, those files uh, from disk as it's mounted from the secret, and then it's going to use those, um, you know, keys and, and certificate and CA etc. Um, as the kind of signing um, uh, kind of CA. Um, so what's going to happen then is all uh, workloads uh, in the mesh when they request their crypto bundles from the control plane. Um, they're going to be signed uh, from that uh, intermediate that we've minted here. So now we have the um, Istio uh, service mesh installed with our custom uh, intermediate CA. Um, I now just want to verify that the identities that are issued by the um, Istio control plane are indeed signed by that intermediate. Um, so all I'm doing here is um, I'm uh, deploying uh, a couple of, kind of dummy applications, um, uh, HTTP bin and sleep. And all I'm doing is um, uh, opening up an SSL connection from the you know, sleep uh, proxy um, over to the HTTP bin. I'm extracting the certificate that the HTTP bin proxy uh, responded with. Um, and if we just look at the contents there, you can see uh, there at the bottom that it was indeed issued by the Istio CA Intermediate uh, Certificate Authority. Um, and indeed, if we look at the uh, SAN name, uh, the URI uh, is the Spiffy identity that we're expecting. So it's the similar to um, what we were looking at earlier. Um, the trust domain is cluster.local and the service account is in the default namespace and the service account of HTTP bin. Thanks, Josh. That was great to see. We're now going to move on to Linkerd. Uh, Linkerd, of course, is a service mesh that's in the CNCF. Um, very similar architecture here, or certainly uh, has a control plane, ha has a data plane. Um, somewhat different, of course, in that the proxy uh, is not Envoy. Um, it's a Rust-based Envoy, the Linkerd proxy. Uh, but it also has a component in its control plane, much like Istio, that's responsible for identity and um, providing the identity to all of those proxies in the data plane. And so as just as before, we're gonna, we're gonna see a demo of how to uh, plug in um, like an intermediate uh, into uh, Linkerd uh, and see it set up and see a workload or a set of workloads running. Great, so next I'm gonna be installing uh, the Linkerd mesh uh, with a custom uh, root uh, CA. So again, I, um, I have uh, the root of my PKI um, living inside the cluster. Again, this would normally live uh, offline somewhere. I've also minted an intermediate CA uh, from that root, uh, which I'm going to be using as the root of trust for my Linkerd mesh. Um, so what I'm doing here is grabbing the uh, CA um, of that intermediate and then uh, installing Linkerd now um, using that um, uh, CA. 
So it's noting here that um, I don't need to create a custom uh, secret um, since the Linkerd um, mesh um, is expecting the same kind of format um, as my cert manager certificate um, that contains the uh, intermediate CA. Great, so once again, um, just like we did with Istio, I want to verify that the identities uh, that are provided to the services running in my LinkedIn mesh um, are those we're expecting and, and signed by uh, the uh, CA intermediate uh, that we minted earlier. So again, I'm deploying uh, the uh, kind of uh, dummy services, um, and this time um, I'm going to do the trick in the other way around. So um, from the HTBIM uh, proxy, I'm going to open a TLS connection onto the sleep pod. And if we grab out this, uh, the certificate, which was returned, uh, you can see here that the uh, certificate was indeed um, signed by the intermediate that we're expecting there from the issuer. And the certificate itself uh, contain, uh, contained a DNS um, in the form um, that we're expecting of the kind of pod identity uh, that we connected to. So in this case, um, it, it, it's DNS. And indeed, it's the uh, sleep service account, uh, which was determined um, as, as the identity. Thanks, Josh. Uh, so finally, we're now going to uh, look at um, open service mesh. This is another service mesh that is in the CNCF. It's in the sandbox, um, just like Cert Manager. And uh, this is a project from, from Microsoft. Um, also uses Envoy as its as its uh, data plane in its data plane, uh, and it actually has um, a component built into it. For so from the get go, it's had support for certificate management. And that we you are know, responsible for kind of generating those certificates and also distributing uh, it across the uh, across the mesh. And we actually worked quite early on with the project to integrate uh, it directly with Cert Manager. So you can you can use I believe HashiCorp Vault. It's got support for it's got its own inbuilt component as well. Uh, I think Key Vault, Azure Key Vault, and and Cert Manager. And so Josh, you're going to demonstrate. Uh, how it works with Cert Manager. Great. So finally, um, we're going to install Open Service Mesh. So like the others, I have a uh, root CA uh, installed in the cluster and an intermediate uh, minted from that root. Um, like the others, um, I'm going to extract the CA certificate, which I'm going to supply to Open Service Mesh um, via a certificate. Um, and what's the interesting thing with Open Service Mesh is that it integrates, uh, as mentioned, directly with Cert Manager. Um, so I actually have um, an issuer installed in the cluster, um, which is backed by that intermediate CA. And what this means is that the control plane, um, uh, well, not only the control plane of Open Service Mesh, but also the workloads running in Open Service Mesh, all request their certificates uh, via certificate request resources. Um, which are cert manager resources. Um, and so the issuer uh, that they reference uh, will go ahead and sign those resources. Um, and what's the nice thing about this is that um, the cert manager issuer, which is which is referenced by open service mesh, um, its private key doesn't need to live on the in the cluster whatsoever. It can it can live somewhere else uh, just as long as it can sign uh, those certificate request resources. So lastly, um, once again, I want to verify uh, that the services that I deploy to my open service mesh cluster um, uh, uh, their identities are indeed signed by the intermediate CA that we minted earlier, and uh, as well, the identities are matching uh, what we're expecting them to be. Um, so again, I've deployed these uh, dummy services, and I'm going to be using the open service mesh uh, CLI to dump out the proxy configuration of our uh, sleep pod here. Um, and we check the uh, if we grab out the kind of certificate uh, which was dumped out, we can see again that the certificate was um, signed. Uh, issued by the uh, intermediate that we minted earlier and the identity which is contained within that uh, sleep um, certificate um, is the uh, identity of the sleep service account. So in the open service mesh case, um, it's represented in DNS and you can see here that it's the sleep service account and the default namespace uh, in the cluster local uh, trust domain. Thanks, Josh. That was great to see uh, the meshes um, actually in action uh, and how it's possible to plug in uh, an intermediate CA uh, for the trust domains and have the mesh issue um, those signed certificates and distribute those to the proxies and to use uh, for the purposes of, of you know of the service identities or for the or, you know for the applications. It's really really neat. Uh, we should probably uh, I'm thinking about this. We should probably open source uh, those demos, Josh. <laughs> let's try and let's try and make that happen in time for the event.
Yeah, of course, it's worth pointing out that uh, there are other meshes, there are many, many uh, meshes out there, and we had limited time today. So what we've shown of three, uh, and um, those, you know, for the most part, they, you know, of course, sport, uh, spiffy identity, uh, the spiffy identity that Josh uh, spoke about, uh, but there are, there are, there are others, um, and you know, there, there are a number of them here uh, that many of you will be uh, possibly familiar with already. And uh, just worth pointing out, there are also some sort of mesh-like implementations out there. And um, specifically here, we've got one called, you know, DAPR, uh, Distributed Application Runtime uh, from Microsoft. And, you know, that's interesting because it's, you know, in, more of an in-process runtime and it provides much of the functionality of a mesh uh, and more. It's um, really interesting, worth, worth checking out. So we're nearly... Uh, at the end of our time now, uh, in fact, we're uh, possibly likely to go over, uh, but just to summarize, um, service identity really is key to zero trust um, with service mesh. And, it, you know, it really all starts effectively with identity and getting that right. And it provides the foundations uh, for being able to do uh, yeah, everything else really uh, with uh, mesh. You know, the mesh provides the means to be able to automate those short-lived uh, certificates uh, more often than not with spiffy and distribute those to the proxies uh, in order for that mutual tls that josh spoke about to be established between services uh, and in most cases this is this is transparent to the application developer you know it's completely built into the platform it's not something they need to do themselves you know a number of the meshes provide the ability to uh to, to be extended so you can actually start sort of plugging in um, intermediates, as we demonstrated, meaning that you can actually integrate this into an existing enterprise uh, chain of trust. And there's, you know, there's certainly more to do in this space. Uh, you know, we're, we're involved in uh, some of that with um, the various projects, but it's certainly great to see where we, we, are, we already are and what's um, possible. So we look forward to the live Q&A. Uh, thanks everyone uh, for joining us uh, today. Stay safe. Um, hope to see you all soon uh, at an in-person EU KubeCon and um, yeah, look forward to seeing you in the not too distant future. Thanks everyone. All the best. Bye-bye.